past, present, and future. Since the dawn of history, humans have harnessed the power of enzymes, playing central roles in the leavening of bread, curdling of cheese, brewing of beer, and the fermenting of wine. Over the last 30 years, we have witnessed an unprecedented expansion in our understanding and use of enzymes in a vast range of research and industrial applications. Today, we are in the golden age of enzyme technology. The decades of the 80s and 90s changed the landscape, a multi-billion dollar industry with broadening applications related to food, textiles, leather, pulp and paper, enzymes are the focus of intense research in the biomedical community. The workforce of DNA sequencing, enzymes were indispensable for scientists completely mapping 3.2 billion base pairs of the human genome, as well as the driving force behind the therapeutic drug market for HIV AIDS related therapies. Enzymes make up the largest and most highly specialized class of protein molecules, and these complex three-dimensional macromolecules are produced in all living cells, catalyzing thousands of biochemical reactions. Each enzyme has a distinct overall size and shape, setting up precise lock and key conformations for specific bond cleavage. Enzymes are highly efficient and are capable of accelerating reaction rates by 100 million to 10 billion times faster than without them. Paper conservators have long valued enzymes and have incorporated them into wet treatment procedures to expedite the breakdown of intractable and cross-linked adhesive residues and to facilitate the removal of secondary backings and linings. In 1997, with the guidance of Richard Wolbers, I began my deep dive into enzymes. This investigation was to develop to gain insights into all practical aspects of incorporating enzymes into aqueous immersion treatments with a focus on the hydrolase type protease. Catalytic efficiency of enzymes functioning outside of the cell is inherently dependent on proper conditions of temperature and pH, amongst others. At that time, common criticisms against enzyme use in conservation related to the prohibitively high costs, along with concerns of residual effects on the artifact. Many goals of the study were realized, and there are three important points that I want to highlight from this slide. The decade between 1986 and 1996 was an intense time in biomedical research. Tremendous advances were made in methods of extraction and isolation of enzymes, resulting in highly purified enzymes with massively amplified activity rates. Simultaneously, costs drop precipitously. Together with increased purity and intensified activity rates, much smaller amounts are needed to drive reactions in the same volume of solution, exponentially smaller. Innovations in that decade resulted in changes on three orders of magnitude. Powerful stuff. The hydrolase group function is catalyzing hydrolytic cleavage or digestion of such biological polymers as starches, proteins, or lipids. Enzyme selection is specifically symbiotic with the substrate to be acted upon. Selection is the arena to keep a watchful eye as more and more specific cleavage mechanisms are identified, and in 2014, we see the first synthetic enzyme being engineered in the lab. Keep in mind that until this point, my work with enzymes was utilizing them in an aqueous immersion environment, operating optimally in free and mobile states similar to those of their native cellular fluids. In the year 2000, this 342-year-old patient came into my life. 
in this state. The injuries suffered are consequences of perplexing decisions made in the hands of a reckless framer. A window mat composed of poorly processed wood pulp was applied directly onto the surface of the painting. Attached with a copiously applied dark amber globular protein adhesive. The remaining evidence told the tale of a brutal attempt to remove the window mat, taking with it parts of the left edge along with its media layer. Leaving behind the window mat's core of sulfite fibers infused into the adhesive. Indian paintings are typically well constructed on multi-laminar rigid paper supports with heavily applied layers of transparent and opaque inorganic, organic, and metallic paints bound with gum arabic. Supremely delicate details result from tremendous technical finesse and masterful handling. Damages tend to be the result of external circumstances. This gelatinous craggly mass, in fact, tested positive for protein, and the treatment strategy evolved from there. Although the paint film is not readily soluble in water, it did swell and became extremely vulnerable to any subsequent mechanical action. I needed an approach that would require far less manipulation with controlled cleaning, and thus the agarose trypsin enzyme gel was prepared. Agarose is prepared as is customary with modifications tailored to maximize the enzyme's catalytic efficiency. The enzyme and agarose are combined before agarose reaches its gel point and detailed instructions and advices are in the paper. I began with small pieces of the enzyme agarose gel placed in discrete areas on the work of art carried out initial critical evaluations on the working properties of the gel and observed variable responses of the artwork, working under binocular magnification. At this stage, it's important to be alert and to plan for interventions related to the alterations in surface texture, creations of planar distortions, tide line formation, and disruption of sensitive media. Dwell times per block vary with the avail availability of the substrate to the enzyme. One can also precondition the substrate to be acted upon with the conditioned water before applying the gel block. Conditioning the gel for optimal effectiveness alongside maintaining the enzyme's viability together make for a remarkably effective two-pronged working system. Some of the many benefits are that the gel is clear, allowing one to see and gauge the substrate being acted upon, and at concentrations of 1 to 1.2%, the agarose enzyme gel remains soft, flexible, and pliant enough to conform to the surface being treated. Targeted enzymatic cleavage on specified substrate is coupled, therefore, with capillary action of the agarose poultice. Working in a systematic microlayer increments, small gel blocks were selectively placed until all areas of adhesive accretion had been addressed, leaving the last microlayer due to the risks of disrupting the paint layer, paint film. Although the enzyme gel eliminated the need for mechanical action, the five to eight minutes of dwell time did result in an extremely soft and pliant paint film. Yes, the paint swells. Yes, the paper expands. And yes, at times the wasley, the multi-laminar paper support started to delaminate. All situations that had to be dealt with. As with any conservation treatment, a host of complex parameters are to be kept in mind while gauging risks against ideal outcomes, a constant balancing act. Gaining an empirical understanding of these powerful cleaning systems on surrogates is highly recommended. Brahma receiving an offering remains the most dramatic, successful, and rewarding enzymatic gel treatment in my portfolio. 
The most challenging and difficult treatments have their way of demanding more of us and pushing us to expand. Additionally, I offer you the following seed pearls of inspiration to briefly illustrate other cases where enzyme gels have proven to be a valuable tool, in many instances dealing with water-sensitive supports. Facilitating the removal of layers of old guards and embedded adhesives, gels minimize moisture and with enzymes reduce dwell time in general. Gel concentrations are slightly varied depending on the thickness of the parchment and accessibility of the adhesive, but let's not you know, get confined into formulaic thinking and definitely experiment. Higher concentrations result in longer dwell times and remarkably increased interfacial tensions when removing gels from the objects. Agarose enzyme gels can also serve the rare book conservator in facilitating the removal of entrenched adhesive residues locked into the ridges along interior spines. More delicate surfaces that cannot endure mechanical manipulation of any kind. Enzyme gels successfully reduced embedded adhesives along this spine edge from a detached manuscript a detached manuscript folio, so enabling holistic procedures to ensue, which alleviated paper distortions along with vulnerable stress points on the painting surface. Enzymes and their specificity have, have been and will continue to be exciting and powerful tools to the conservator. Of gurus and guides, I know the bodhisattvas grace the earth. And we all need guides, maps, and direction. Inspiration leads to action. And the translation of dispensing boons in Bodhisattva speak is delivering the teachings. I extend my offering of gratitude to Richard Wolbers, who instilled in me a mindset that with an understanding of the technical and physical nature of the objects, as well as learning and borrowing from many disciplines, Treatment strategies can be shaped and refined to fit the needs of these unique and irreplaceable works of art in our care. Targeted treatment strategies will carry us well into the future, exploring vast opportunities for continued refinement. Thank you for your attention.